All right, so write an apparent expression for write an expression for the apparent nth term of the sequence. Assume n begins with one. So we want to find out what's going on from one number to the next. So what do we have to do to get from negative three to negative eight? Uh, minus, five. minus five, and from negative eight to negative three. I mean negative thirteen. Minus five and minus five. So here we have an arithmetic sequence and we're subtracting five each time. So our D is negative five. And for our arithmetic sequence, we have A sub N is equal to our zero term times D minus N, so negative five N. We want to find out what our zero term is. So here we have our first term, second. So our zero term, what do we have to do to find that term? Um, add, five. add five, we do the opposite. So we add five to go backwards. So negative three plus five would be positive two. So this would be two minus five n. And you can always check your work by like taking the third term. So we know this is the third term. We can plug in three here for n and we should get negative 13. You can do it with the fourth term too. Plug in four, should get negative 18. Yes. So when I talked about this in the notes, there were like two ways that we can solve these. Doing it this way is using like a sub zero to plug it in here. You can use your official formula, which is a sub n is equal to, it would be a sub one plus n minus one times d. And then you could plug in a sub one and D, and then just simplify it that way, and you'd get the same thing. All right, so I know I did some of them in class. I'm gonna work through a few others. I'm not gonna work them all out, but I'll just go through them kind of quickly so you guys can see. So whenever it says write the first five terms of the sequence, we just wanna plug in a sub one, a sub two, a sub three, a4 and A5. So we're just plugging in each one of these numbers for n. So we have 8 times 1 plus 6. That would give us 14 and so on. On your quiz, just like I said for the homework, I don't just want the answer each time. I want to see your work. So like this step here each time. So I just want to see what you plug in and what you're putting into your calculator. So the next one, we would do the same thing. Plug in 1 through 5. This one, I'll just plug in 4. We can do that one together. So you have 3 times 4 over 4 squared minus 2. Just when doing these, be careful with your order of operations. That's probably the most common, not really common mistake, but most, the only really thing you could mess up here. Just be careful what you plug in. Be careful with your order of operations. So we have 12 over 16 minus 2 is 14, and then we could just leave it as a fraction. Oh, simplified fraction. So 6 over 7. So find the indicated term of the sequence here, just looking for the 16th term. So we just want to plug in 16 into all of our n's. So we have a sub 16 is equal to 16 squared over four times 16 minus three. And we should get on top 256 over 64. minus 3, so 256 over 61. You can just leave your answer as a fraction, or you can put it as a decimal, it doesn't matter. 
for the next one we do the same thing just plug in 19. I did number the next one in class I'll do the one after that so here we have negative one half one five halves seven halves when you see a pattern of like fractions on the bottom sometimes it helps just to make this like two over two that way we can kind of see the pattern that's going on on the top and the denominator stays the same as we go and also there was a correction on this it should be eight over two which would make this four but yeah not seven so it's supposed to be eight so we see as we go to the next and to the next we are adding three in our numerator our denominator stays as two because if we were adding the whole number three that would throw off our fractions but the denominator just stays the same the whole time we add three halves sorry the band is playing right now i don't know if you guys can hear them or not so our d is three halves Next, we want to find the zero term, so a sub zero. This is our first, our zero, we would have to subtract three halves. So we're just subtracting three from our numerator. So negative one minus three would give us negative four over two, which would be negative two. So then we can plug this into our formula. We have a sub n is equal to our zero term, which is negative two plus d times n, so 3 halves times n. Again, we could do this the official way with our formula that is a sub n is equal to a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. Our a sub 1 is the first term that it gives us, so negative 1 half. plus n minus 1 times d, which is 3 halves. We would have to distribute the 3 halves in here, which would be negative 1 half plus 3 halves n minus 3 halves. And then negative 1 minus 3 halves would be negative 4 halves plus three halves n. And then we could simplify negative four halves to negative two. So a sub n is equal to negative two plus three halves n. Be seven thirds. So looking at the simplify each factorial expression, nine has two exclamation points, but that was just a typo. So there's not gonna be one with two exclamation points. It's just one. So a factorial is when you multiply that number and down. So here we have 18 times 17 times 16 times 14 times 13 times 12 times 11 times 10 times 9 times 8. I'm going to put dot, dot, dot because we got it. Over. 9 factorial is from 9 down, so we have 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5, dot, 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 and keep going down. You can cancel out numbers on the top if they're the same as numbers on the bottom. So we see 9 cancels out with 9, 8 cancels out with 8, and 7, 6, 5, 4 is going to cancel out with 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, everything after that. So on the top, all we're multiplying is 18 times 17 times 16 times 14 times 12 times 11 times 10. And then when you multiply those together, you get a huge number. I think it is 176 with eight zeros. So 17 billion. You can write the answer like this. Sometimes the number is so big for the calculator, it would say 1.76 times 10 to the 10th power. Like in scientific notation, both of these work. So it doesn't matter.
All right, let's look at the next one. Alex, I'll do your question next. So on top, we have 12 times 11 times 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And then we also have 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 on the bottom we have 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 and 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 so I can cancel out any number that's the same on the top and the bottom so I have sevens that cancel sixes fives fours threes twos and then I also have a four here and a four here a three here and a three here a two here and a two here so on the top I'm only left with 12 times 11 times 10 times 9 times 8 times 5 So when you put this into the calculator, you should get 475,200. So yes, we did have another five on the bottom, but that was already canceled out with this five. So you can't cancel it out with two things, it's just one. There is also a button in most calculators that do the factorial for you. So I think in some calculators, you can just put this in and then divide it by this. So just if your calculator has the factorial button, you can do that, or you can just write it out, cancel it out, or you can, I think an exclamation point. All right, I did the first two on this page with factorials before, so let's find the sum. Here we see we have an arithmetic sequence, so we know we're going to do our sum formula which is s sub n is equal to n over 2 times a sub 1 plus a sub n. So n is going to be our last term here. And a sub 1, we just have to plug in our first term. a sub n is going to be when we plug in our last term. So first let's find a sub 1. Our first number that we need to plug in is 1. So a sub 1 is equal to 8 times 1 minus 5. This gives us 3. a sub n is going to be 8. So 8 times 8 minus 5, which is... 64 minus 5, so 59. So we have S sub n is equal to 8 over 2 times 3 plus 59. So S sub n is equal to 4. 3 plus 59 is 62. And 4 times 62 is 248. We could also work this one out by plugging in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8, because 8's our last number, and adding them all together. So that would work too. Let's look at the next one. So we do the same formula. Even though we're multiplying these two together, it's still an arithmetic sequence because our arithmetic sequence is d times n plus or minus whatever it is, a sub zero. So it's d times n, that's what's going on here. So we are multiplying, but it's still an arithmetic sequence, so we use the same formula that we used above. So we have s sub n is equal to n over two times a one plus a n. So n is seven, and a sub one, we have to plug in our first term, which is three to find, a sub n, we have to plug in seven to find. So s sub n is equal to, let's find a sub 3. 
So that would be three times one third, which would just be three thirds, which is one. And then we also have to find what a sub n is. So n is seven. However, this n on top is the number of terms here. So we're plugging in three, four, five, six, and seven. One, two, three, four, five. So we plug in five numbers. So five halves. A sub one we said was one plus a sub n, so we plug in 7, 7 thirds, so we can add these two together, this would be like 3 thirds, plus 7 thirds would be 10 thirds, times 5 halves, which would be 50 over 6, which is 25 over 3. So again, we could just plug in 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7, find out what all of those values are, add them together, that would work too, or just use the formula. For the first one up here, to find the common difference, we just see what does it take to get from one number to the next. We add 7, and add 7, and add 7. It tells us that's an arithmetic sequence, so you know you're going to add or subtract some numbers, so just keep that in mind when you see the questions on the quiz. It'll tell you if it's an arithmetic or geometric sequence, so you know whether you have to add or subtract or multiply. So write the first five terms of the arithmetic sequence. So first thing we need to do is use our formula. a sub n is equal to a sub 1, which is 19, plus n minus 1 minus or times negative 4 because it's times d distribute out that negative 4 so we have 19 minus 4n plus 4 combine like terms so 23 yep minus 4n this is our formula and then we just plug in a sub 2, a sub 3, a sub 4, a sub 5. Into your formula that you just found here, plug in 2, 3, 4, 5, and you get your values there. Next one, use the formula for the general term of an arithmetic sequence to find the indicated term of the sequence with the given first term, a sub 1, and the common difference, d. So, same thing here, but now it tells us to find the 80th Term. So we have a sub n is equal to a sub 1, which is negative 5, plus n minus 1 times negative 6. Multiply out that negative 6. So negative 5 minus 6n plus 6. So a sub n is equal to negative 6n plus 1. And then we just take 80, plug it into n, and we should get a sub 80 is equal to negative 479. The next one. We're doing the same thing here, but we have to find what our common difference is because it doesn't give it to us. So we see that we subtract 9, subtract 9, subtract 9. So our common difference is negative 9. We plug that into our formula, so a sub n is equal to a sub 1, which is 10, plus n minus 1 times negative 9. Distribute this out, so 10 minus 9, n plus 9, 19 minus 9n is our equation, and then it asks us to find a sub 20, so we need to just plug in 20 for n, and we should get negative 161. Next one, find the sum of the first 30 terms of the arithmetic sequence. So we use our sum formula again. So s sub n is equal to n over 2 times a sub 1 plus a sub n. Hope this one's infinite. Nope, just kidding, 30 terms. So even though it has that dot, 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 
it tells us just the sum of the first 30 terms. So our n is going to be 30. So s sub n is equal to, or s sub 30, is equal to 30 over 2. a sub 1 is 6 plus a sub n. So we have to find the 30th term here. So we need to come up with our sequence, our equation for our sequence, so we can plug in 30 and find the 30th term. So we see here we are adding 10, adding 10, and adding 10. So a sub n is equal to We want to find what our zero term is, so we can just subtract 10 to go backwards. So this would be negative 4 plus 10n. And then we want to find a sub 20. So negative 4 is equal to 10 times negative 4 plus, I keep doing that, 20 times 10. So that would give us a sub 20 is equal to 296. I lied, we're plugging in 30, which is still 296. I was just looking at the wrong thing. We're plugging in 30 because we're looking for the sum of the first 30 terms. So we get 296. So we have 6 plus 296. You can put this into your calculator, and we get the sum of our 30 terms is 4,000. 530. Write out the first three terms and the last term of the arithmetic sequence. So we want to plug in a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, and a sub 60. First three and the last. So just plug in 1, we get negative 3 times 1, which is negative 3. Plug in 2, negative 3 times 2 negative 6, negative 3 times 3, negative 9, negative 3 times 60, and that is negative 180. The next one says find the first n terms of the arithmetic sequence to find the indicated sum. So arithmetic sequence sum, you use your arithmetic sum formula. S sub n is equal to n over 2 times a sub 1 plus a sub n. Next one, if the given sequence is a geometric sequence, find the common ratio. So for this, we just take the second term, divide it by the first. So negative 12 divided by 4 gives us negative 3. All right, next page. So find the indicated sum, use the formula for the sum of the first n terms of a geometric sequence. That one? Okay. So we use the formula. It says geometric sequence. So we use the sum of the geometric sequence formula. So that is S is equal to A sub 1 times 1 minus R to the nth power over 1 minus R. So we want to figure out what A sub 1 is, our first term, and we need to figure out what R is. So our first term, it tells us we have to plug in 1. This is where we start. So we plug in 1 in our i. So we have 2 times 4 to the power of 1, which is just 2 times 4. So what's a sub 1? 8. And then what is r? 4. Perfect. So we plug that in. So our sum is equal to 8 times 1 minus 4. What's n? What's our last number that we have to plug in? 
five. That's n. So four to the fifth power over one minus four. Then from here, we can simplify it a bit or just put it into your calculator. So this would be eight times one minus 1,024. One minus four is three, negative three. If we divide this into our calculator, so just doing this inside part here, we should get eight times 341. And then just multiply those two together. And we get the sum is equal to 2,728. So find the sum of the infinite geometric series. So our infinite sum formula is a sub 1 over 1 minus r. So we need to figure out what our a sub 1 is and what our r is. What's our first term? 48. How do we find our r? It's our common ratio. Awesome. Just take any term and divide it by the term in front. So 12 divided by 48, and we get 1 fourth. Yep. So our sum is equal to 48 over 1 minus 1 fourth. which you can put this into your calculator. I think this would be 48 over 0.75. And then just divide. And we should get 64. So we did the last two together in class. Let's look at the first one up here. Write the first five terms of the geometric sequence. First thing we need to do is come up with our geometric sequence formula. So we have a sub n is equal to a sub 1 times r to the power of n minus 1. So it tells us our a sub 1. It tells us our r. So that's all we need. So a sub n is equal to 3 times 1 over 5 to the power of n minus 1. And then to find a sub 1, just plug in 1 for n, multiply it out. Just do the same thing for a sub 2, a sub 3, a sub 4, a sub 5. Next one, use the formula for the general term of a geometric sequence to find the indicated term of the sequence. So, geometric sequence. And we have to find, given the first term a1, Oh, we have to find a sub 4. So we plug everything in. We're looking for a sub 4, and that's equal to a sub 1. So we're using this formula from up here, again down here. a sub 1 is 7. Our r is negative 2. Our fourth term is what we're looking for. So 4 is our n minus 1, because that's our formula. So we have a sub 4. Is equal to 7 times negative 2 to the third power. Which would give us negative 56. Write the formula for the general term, the nth term of the geometric sequence. So we use the same formula from up here, again down here. So a sub n is equal to a sub 1 is our first term, so 6. We have to find what r is. And we know to find r, you take the second term, divide it by the one before, the first term. So 12 divided by 6 is 2. 
and then to the power of n minus 1. And that's our equation. Alright, next, the general term of the sequence is given. Determine whether the given sequence is arithmetic, geometric, or neither. And if the sequence is arithmetic, find the common difference. If it's geometric, find the common ratio. So we see that this looks like our arithmetic formula. It looks like d sub n plus a sub 0. Not d sub n, d times n plus a sub 0. So this is arithmetic. And our common difference is 3. This one looks like our geometric because we have an n in our exponent and our ratio is 4. Alright, last one. Use the formula for the sum of the first n terms of a geometric sequence to solve. Find the sum of the first 13 terms of the geometric sequence. So we use our sum of a geometric sequence formula, so s is equal to a sub 1 times 1 minus r to so the nth power over 1 minus r. It doesn't give us r here, so we use our terms to find what it is. Take the second term, divide it by the first, so r is equal to negative 3. So s is equal to 5, that's our first term, times 1 minus, what did I say, negative 3? Yeah, negative 3. We're looking for the first 13 terms, so n is 13 over 1 minus negative 3. In our bottom of the parentheses, so this would be 5 times, we can just add those two together because a minus negative becomes a plus, so that would be 4. On the top, we can't just get rid of the parentheses and add them together because that 13 is our exponent to the negative 3. So we have to take negative 3 and raise it to the 13th power. So we have 1 minus a really, really big negative number. I just cleared it from my calculator. but So then this, I'll do it again so we have it. So it is negative 1,594,323. 1 minus that would be that plus 1 because this becomes a big plus. So it turns into a positive, so add 1, we get 5 times 1,594,324 over 4, so we divide by 4, and then multiply times 5, and we get 1,992,905. Sorry, my handwriting's so bad. My Apple Pencil just gave out, so I apologize. All right, so that's a little bit of everything from the review. Sorry I went super fast, but if you need to, just look at the PDF for the answers. It's all worked out super pretty on there. Let me know. Email me if you have any questions about the review or about your quiz tomorrow. I'll email you right back. All right, have a good one. See you tomorrow.